be lifted high. Can you lift your hands as you sing this song? Lord, we exalt you. We're singing songs that lift him high. Listen to what you are singing. You're righteous. There is no deceit in you. Now sing it with faith in your heart. Believe that I. Oh Lord, oh Lord, be lifted high for you are holy. Righteous and worthy. Oh Lord, be lifted high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hope ten people tell them you're welcome. It's good to see you. And be gloriously seated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It's good to see everyone. We have a lot to do tonight. Hallelujah. A lot to do tonight. God is desperate to make sure somebody has a testimony in this place. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. We're rounding up our family life series today. It's going to be powerful. Psalms 128. Tonight, we're going to cause the yoke of delay in marriage once and for all. I'm serious. Don't think we're playing. We don't just talk stories in this place. We're going to confront, we're confronting the gates of hell in a way that will shock you tonight. This is pre-miracle service. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're going to destroy a lot of things that have tied people's marital destinies. Let me tell you something. If you came here just drowsy and sleepy, wake up. Today's service is not the type you sleep in. Because whatever has refused to respond to your life and to your marital destiny will change tonight. Some of you will be standing for your loved ones. Could this be the answer to your prayer and fasting? So make sure that you are wide awake. If your neighbor is disturbing him, say, neighbor, we didn't pay money for this place. So behave yourself. Hallelujah. Psalms 128. Psalms 128 verse 1. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Because I fear the Lord. Say one more time. I am blessed, I am blessed. because I fear the Lord. He says, that walketh in his ways. Verse 2. For thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands. Who is God speaking to tonight? He said, for thou shalt eat the labor of your hands. Happy shall thou be and it shall be well with you. Are you ready now? Verse 3. Brothers, can you say amen? amen. Thy wife. That means you will be married. I curse. Listen, listen. He says, thy wife. He didn't say a stranger that is roaming around your house without identity. He said, thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine. Hold on. He didn't say your wife shall be as a vine because Jesus saw a fig tree that didn't bear fruit. He said, thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine. By thy side, no divorce. This is not the issue of fighting. He said, by thy side. And the last time I read my Bible, my Bible says Jesus was standing at the right side of the Father. They have not had any issue. There, there has not been need to separate themselves. Hallelujah. Everybody say thy children. I tell you the truth. The devil 
that is, a, is, is responsible for the barrenness of people and families. I'm going to be teaching shortly and we'll be praying. This night, light and darkness will clash. One must bow this night. I told you this is, this is pre-miracle service. Hallelujah. It says, thy children, like olive plants, round about your table. Organize, discipline, visionary children, not touts, not thieves, not troublemakers, not terrorists. It said they'll be round about your table, not in prison cells. They will be round about your table. Verse 4. Behold, that thus shall be blessed. That means this is a portrait. This is how you will know that a man is blessed of the Lord. He said, whenever you see a man organized, married, with his wife by his side, well-behaved children, sitting around a table, that means there is prosperity there. He said, when you see that, this is a portrait of God's idea of a blessed family. Say amen. amen. Father, we ask you tonight, in the name of Jesus, do something in this place. You told me you will shake, tear down altars, Lord, it's time to let your people go maritally. We are, we are here tonight to confront the gates of hell and release your people. Enough is enough. It's good to have testimonies of cars, healings, miracles, but God wants you to be blessed maritally. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Genesis 1.28 I'll be talking about three things and then we'll pray straight away. Hallelujah. And God blessed them. Say, and God blessed them. And said unto them, number one, number two, be fruitful, multiply. It says, replenish the earth, subdue it, why will he say subdue it? Because there is an adversary roaming around. He says subdue. In other words, exert authority over him. And have dominion over the fish and all of that and all of that. Hallelujah. Now very quickly, how many of you have been blessed by the Family Life series? We started talking about a lot of things. Hallelujah. And by the grace of God, we have been able to cover some grounds. Remember our five love languages, the love and respect principle. For many of you who have not been around, please get it. It's very serious, very comprehensive. Hallelujah. Now, I want to talk briefly. I'll talk on three subtopics. Number one, the reason why people experience late or no marriage. The reason why people experience late or no marriage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is not so much of a teaching because I'm, I'm in a hurry to finish. I want to pray. Hallelujah. Honestly, I want to pray. We need to tear down walls because some of you have suffered things that the devil must repay back. A hundredfold, pressed down, shaken together. See, the Bible says if you catch a thief, you won't just say, sorry, I, I won't do it again. No, no. The Bible doesn't deal with thieves like that. It says if you catch a thief, who is a thief? Who is a thief? No, no, no. I didn't say who is the thief. Who is a thief generally? One who lays claim and steals what is not his own. There are many people that would have been enjoying the bliss of joy in their marriage and their family. And the devil has taken a lot of things. Many of you have been helpless. People think you are careless. But tonight, I tell you, we will expose that devil. God showed me this thing. By now, you should know. When you hear me talking like this, I have seen something. Hallelujah. The reason why people experience late or no marriage. Before we talk about Satan, we want to address a few things. The number one reason is unreasonable expectations. Everybody right. Unreasonable, ridiculous expectations. Hallelujah. Please look up. I found out that one of the reasons why a lot of people cannot get married is that their expectations are unrealistic hallelujah especially for ladies when you ask certain ladies ah what kind of guy do you want to marry they say me 
the way I am like this. Even if that guy, he must be six feet three. Six feet 2.9 is not for me. He should be able to smile and be very nice. He should be able to speak Queen's English, not, not L-E-A English. That is just basic enough to pass, to get, um, what the, what's that? <laughs> School living certificate. The guy must be able to have a good sense of color combination. He must be able to have this. There's, I have no problem against your list. The only question I have is, when will he have these things? Before or during or, if you wish, after the marriage. There's nothing wrong with having these wonderful expectations. My only question is, when? Hallelujah. So, all the brothers that have come, 58 over 60, F9. 59 over 60, F9. 40 over 60, F9. Hallelujah. Unreasonable expectations. There are many people, especially ladies, the, the way the expectations you have carved out for yourself, the only person that fits that expectation is Jesus Christ. No mortal man can fit that expectation. Today you see somebody that looks nice tomorrow and say, mm -mm, I don't like the way the guy smiles. Why is he too loud? And I want somebody that is... Ah. One man said the best way to predict your future is to create it. So that you don't disturb anybody. Create it by yourself. Hallelujah. Everybody say unreasonable expectation. Me, I have suffered in my life where I must marry a millionaire. I must marry a millionaire. There's no, you know when they are taking people for a job, they say you are a driver, you must have five years experience. Some of you, you must have five years experience with prosperity. You must know how to do this and that. He must have his duplex, so I'm not ready to manage inside one room that will be squeezing me. As you are laughing tonight, take it seriously because we have to solve. Some of us are the ones who open doors. For delay in marriage. Financial status. Oh, he must be. No, no, no. I'm he's still under unreasonable expectations. Financial status. Brother, where are you working? There's one primary school here. The primary school, me. I, I'm, I, your father has warned you. Your mother has warned you. They say, don't bring any teacher for us here. I was a teacher. Your mother was a teacher. Change. And now you are waiting, you are hoping. Oh, Shell, NMPC. Where again? Say it. Chevron. Uh huh. Sir? Mobile. Look at the lady smiling. CBN. Nigerian Printing and Minting Company. Then go take group. And some of you are happy. Oh, this is the kind. I want somebody that when I stand by him. People will say, Kai, how did God locate you like this? Remember our song? I didn't know you will answer me this way. Listen, while that vision is good, let me tell you what the problem is. The problem is that with this kind of mindset, you will never be able to get married to the right person. You know why? Because oftentimes, God will tell you, go to your farm and harvest your crop. You will get to the farm and see a bag of seeds. Are you listening to me? With hoe on it and grace. These are the three things you will find there. But God told you, go and get a harvest. It is in God's nature to speak and call things as though they have already happened. So God will tell you a millionaire is coming to your life. And you just see a brother come and say, brother, where are you going? He says, shoemaker. He says, ah, God, this does not look like the prophecy. Unreasonable expectation. Physical appearance. I want somebody who is this and that. I want somebody, guys, 
I want a lady with this and that. I want a lady with dimples. I want a lady with another dimple here. I want a lady with dimple here. I don't want a lady that opens her mouth too wide. What are you looking for? Hallelujah. I want a lady whose hair, you know this Indian film they used to act. I want a lady whose hair is here. Hallelujah. I want a lady who is this. I want a lady who is that. I want a lady who is a top chef who has been validated by everybody to be able to eat. I want a lady who can drive. I want a lady who is this. I want a lady who is that. Unreasonable expectation. Hallelujah. When I was growing up, there was one funny film they used to show. Very nice and pretty. What's the name? Another Life. Man, some of you don't know it. Don't claim you know it. Some of you, where were you then? <laughs> another Life. Hear the name, self. Who use that kind of name now? Media, the Another Life. They're using Second Chance and the rest. And I remember every time I saw some of the people, the, the actors and all of that, I used to look at them and say, ah, especially those who were wicked, they were not very good looking and it used to pain me in the soap opera. And then one poor village pretty lady is the one that will keep telling lies, oppressing and doing all of that. I hated soap operas because I said, ah, why is it that they find very nice ladies and all of that and as small as I was, I had a dream and my dream was that one day, one of the person who was acting, that by God's grace, if I may, oh... Bible says when I was a child. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody say unreasonable expectation. My simple message for you tonight is that it does not happen before relationship. You say, ah, but does that is what let me tell you something. Any success you did not invest in it, you are not qualified to partake. That's why there are some men that only married. There are some, come now, sweetheart, drop your Bible. There are some, there are some men who get married to a lady. They are married though. But this lady is like a stranger. You know why? The guy was already a multi-millionaire. And she's just one of the many things that happened to enter his life. Are you following me now? She has her room. The only thing he does is to sleep with her. That's all. And that's even when he wants. He's like the kings of old. So she's just roaming around like a nanny and a house girl. In that's, not, that's not a good home. Are you hearing me? Children say, mommy, one banana. I say, mm, go and ask your father. Me, ma, they brought me inside this house. <laughs> me, ma, I'm inside this house. No confidence. You know why? You were looking for something that could not be found. And since you found what looked like it, you have to pay the price there. But a brother that you were there with them, you so Gary together. You say, how much do you have now? Don't worry. See, I don't have anything, but I'm speaking God's word. And you can see me. I'm showing you the blueprint of what I'm doing. Now you brought the Gary. We drank together. Do you think if we enter the... What car now? Say something realistic. Don't tell me limousine. Say something realistic, please. A good car. When we enter a good car, listen... Do you think, listen, do you think this lady will be carried away by my prosperity? Because we have been there. Are you listening? You grew into this thing together. Many of you don't want to grow into the blessings of marriage. Some of the wealthy people we know today, ask them. When they got married, the man didn't even have a bicycle. He didn't even have vision for some of them. Just one fellowship, they were strolling one day and God caught him. He got filled with the Holy Ghost. God started walking. But now, the woman is partaking of the blessings. Whether you like the madam or not, she owns the company with her husband. Because they suffered. And she can look at you and tell you, I remember those days. Don't celebrate success that does not have history. It's fake. Any success that does not have history is fake. I assure you, if you are laughing, hold on, stop laughing. Any true success must have history. It is the history that will preserve you in that realm of success.
Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Very important. Unreasonable expectations. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I set realistic standards. Refer to our message. Um, I think that's um, Family Life 2. We, we stated some very clear and reasonable standards. Bless you, sweetheart. Thank you. Hallelujah. What you want does not exist for many of you. So you must come down and believe. It's still part of this running away from responsibility. Many people don't want to build. Many ladies don't want to build. What if I build this thing and later he says I'm not the one? The Bible didn't say you will reap where you sow. It said you will reap what you sow. Hallelujah. Number two. Now this is important. Please everybody listen. Health factors. One of the reasons why people do not get married or they marry late. Of recent, this has become a very, if you are involved in any kind of marriage counseling or maybe in your church and all of that, you know that this is a very big issue. Is that true? Health factors, the issue of genotypes, blood groups. I want you to listen very well. Because for you, what brought you to the sister is beauty and the vision you saw. For your mother or for your father, they know the things that they've had to endure or somebody they know. Are you listening to me? So they have parameters that may not appeal to you. Are you listening to me? Is someone following? Genotype. What do you do? Listen. What do you do when someone who is of a genotype SS, alright? Now you meet this sister, you love her, two of you are getting together and then you find out that she's also SS. What do you do? And the thing has entered two of you. You have told yourself, do or die. Hallelujah. Now you've gone to meet the marriage council on your church and they say, Tor, listen, no. we had the story of so-so-so person like this. And they didn't listen to us. They gave birth to five children. The five children all died. Are you ready for all of these things? You know, is someone getting blessed tonight? These are not issues we young people consider. Ah, Ibuku, Jesus Christ, let Ibuku answer me, oh. Hallelujah. Many of us are too afraid to even consider this thing. Say, look, let's just move. Let's not spoil what God is trying to arrange here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Health factors, blood groups, genotypes. These have become very serious issues. In many churches, I know that this, this thing varies from church to church. Is that true? And I know that there are rules already in some churches. They don't take it. They don't care what you saw or what you had, or how long you have been together. Once they find out that your genotypes are not compatible, they advise you strongly and guide you towards leaving one another. They say, no, please, we can't take it. We are not ready. And from the human perspective, please listen, because some of you have insulted all these people. Let me tell you something. From the human perspective, History has shown us that these kinds of things have brought a lot of problems for families. SS marries SS or AS marries this and then they have children who keep dying or children who are having, you know, a lot of problems. The father has problems, the mother has problems and, you know, in quotes, they become like a liability to a lot of people. Family members, loved ones, they now kick the man out of his job. Now, what do you do? Look up, because some of you probably are in that situation right now as I'm speaking. And you're trusting God for guidance. So, your father or mother said, see you, this guy, you won't marry the person. For 10 years, you poor together. They say, ah, won't you marry? They say, don't worry, we're organizing things. I say, this is what is happening. Late marriage or no marriage. This is one very serious reason. Now, if you don't believe in the supernatural, here's my kind advice. Quietly live. Did you hear what I said? I'm giving you an advice that may not make sense now. But I'm a, if you do not believe in the supernatural, what did I advise? It is my advice. I didn't say God told me. Paul will speak and say, I speak as a man. You may have your relationship programs and somebody may have another opinion. The reason is because, listen... If you do not believe in the supernatural, what the medical science said will happen, will happen. 
Are you listening to me? And you will live your remaining 30, 40, or 50, life, uh, or 50 years in misery and pain. Let me tell you the truth. I've had the opportunity to pray for people and families with these kinds of things, and I know that this is not nice. There are situations where the whole family, father, mother, and the one or two sons, they are all down. What do you do? And for the rest of your life, there is torture from your family members. We told you. How many of you know that kind of thing? Well, thank God we have married people. We told you. Aaron, we warned you. Benga, you didn't hear. You were in love. Now, see, see what has happened. If you believe in the supernatural, you will get up and do something about it. Hello? That kind of supernatural that God will change it when he wants to change it. Uh -uh. That's not a valid supernatural. Alright? So, come sweetheart again. Now, I'm SS, she's SS. Both of you have come and you have, you have found out that this is a serious constraint. But both of you are convinced. Listen, let me tell you. I hope you know God is not an author of confusion. And I hope you know miracles still work. We have seen genotypes, blood groups, whatever change here. So many of them. Now, what, what you would do, listen, I'm telling you what to do straight to the point. You agree and say, look, do you believe this can work? Because if you are the only one who believes it, the lady already in her mind, she has left you. She doesn't just want to embarrass you. Are you following me now? You say, let's pray. Ah, the lady goes back and says, Brother John, I've not really left you. It's just that let's be patching it. Things are getting messy here now. You know, ladies have a very funny way of putting one leg here. They can detect when the bridge starts breaking. They will tell you. They will just stretch their leg. London Bridge is falling down. So they will, they will just be patched. So that whatever happens, they can wage themselves quickly. If you are involved in that, repent tonight in Jesus' name. Double dating is wrong, period. I don't care what you have, what you, you watched in your Nigerian film and soup opera. What Oprah Winfrey told you, Niger uh, what, I want to say Nigerian film is wrong. I like Nigerian films. Don't... Double dating is period. Hallelujah. Do you, the Bible says, can two walk together except the Amos 3.3. So you must agree. Sweetheart, do you believe that God, are you convinced about this and think about it again? If she needs time, don't be angry. She said, honestly, see, let me tell you something. Um, can you give me three days? Yeah, yeah. I've known three days. You don't, uh -uh. You, this, is, this is a very, very serious issue. Don't just get emotional and start shouting at the lady. Say, now nah, I'm agreeing. You are refusing. We have not even married. We're already quarreling. No, no. But if, listen, if you think both of you can work this out, can I tell you something? Seek advice and start working it early. Is that true? Because there are some of us that are very stubborn and have gotten ourselves in trouble. No! This is the guy, your parents say, why don't, see, let me tell you. I believe in the words of elder, so I hope you're hearing me. I'm telling you the truth. Sometimes parents may not know why they are saying what they are saying. But I tell you, there is a depth of wisdom. You are, you are, remember our emotional obsession teaching. Ay! This thing is burning you. As your father or your mother is talking, it's entering here, flying out there. You are not here, you know. Fix this wedding date. Let's do this thing and let the devil be put to shame. But they are telling you, listen, listen. You will get married, you will dance that day, cut cake, and everybody will go. The people who come for your wedding, see, there is a difference between wedding and marriage. Correct? Yes. Wedding is valid for 24 hours. Your marriage begins. Fry plantain for me, honey, I'm down. No, no, please. I'm working in this house to bring money. Me too, am I not suffering what you are suffering? This is how the trouble starts. So if you know, if you think you can believe God for it, Honestly, I'm giving you a very honest and fair advice. Many men of God will spiritualize this thing I'm saying and just tell you, don't worry, things, just believe, claim it, take it. Mm -mm. It has led to a lot of casualties. If both of you cannot believe God for it, cry, fast, 
have your last supper and end the relationship. Don't break it. Believers don't break relationships. They end it with wisdom and grace and bless one another. But if you can believe God for it, then start making efforts. When it's time for miracle service, you say, ah, where are you? you? Say, I'm in the market. Say, leave that market. Oh, leave that market. We have something both of us have agreed upon. God will give you the miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless you. Right? Let's hurry up. Number three, geographic, cultural, and family factors. Right? Why do people experience late marriages or why don't people there are some families your parents have already given you warning right from when you were in primary school you didn't even understand what they were saying they said see bring you know this globe that is in our house map of the world they zoomed it to nigeria they said any state i draw a pen let me not see you there are you ready yes number one number two there are parents of, there are geographic factors that even in the same state, they tell you it's not enough. Is that correct? In fact, some, even in the same village, they say, uh-uh, this clan had this, this in 1921. They had a problem. Now, let me explain something you, that many people may not understand. You see, during the time of our parents, the world was not as heterogeneous as it is right now. Is that correct? Many people live in yards and compounds. All the ladies used to go to the stream together. So the guys could time. Natina. They could just see and know that, okay, in the next 10 years, let me just allow this investment to grow. In the next 10 years, I can be able to come and... So, they knew themselves. The parents knew the parents of the other person. Is that correct? They fought together. They celebrated festivals together. They did a lot of things together. So when you came and told your father that, ah, it's Grace now, Mario. Where is Grace from? Sokoto, they say, ah, where exactly? Say, ah, I know the father now. Give me five. You're a very nice guy. This is the kind of thing we want. Geographic factors. What is the probability of finding somebody from your village who is born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, blessed, visionary? What is the probability? I, I, no, I want you to be very honest and realistic. What is the probability? So in our generation, there will be a lot of crossing of boundaries. Some of you, they wiped your whole village in war. You don't even, you practically don't have a village again. You put migrated somewhere. So when your father or your mother is saying they should get somebody, from where? The old republic, your old place or the new one? Some migrated to Cameroon. Some ran, you know, all of these things. Full of, there are full of people that ran to Sokoto, some to Maiduguri, some to Gombe. So when you are saying a full of, from where? You must marry a full of, Benga, a full of, or nothing else. Which one? Because they've scattered to different places. Hallelujah. It's my personal opinion that that should not be a factor. However, listen, you, you know that I will always balance things. Are you ready now? Some of you are already sad looking at me. Ah. This is the reason why some people have not married. Sister Mary, ha -ha, till now, see my third child, oh, see I must wait until my change comes. Since you were in the university, now both of you are doctors, nothing. See I'll wait, oh, I'll wait. cultural factors, geographic factors. And for many of the things that our parents do, what is their, I hope you know their, their excuses are legitimate, but we know more now. Are you following me? What's their excuse? When there is trouble, when there is fight, when you tear yourselves into pieces, they know your father, 
They know your mother. They can come and sit down. But where you cross boundary, Lagos and Maiduguri, who knows who there? They fought during the traditional wedding and promised themselves they will never look at themselves again. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm saying? Some of you don't believe. I'm advising you, you better free your spirit now. I'm giving you the reasons before we pray. Open your mind and say, Lord, you will not destroy me. For the Bible says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of good and not of evil. For other, other places, the parents say, ah, the people in this place, they are witches and wizards. Let me tell you something straight to the point. The official religion of Africa was witchcraft. Every tribe, every state, everywhere. Is that clear? So don't start saying this state. They are, every who doesn't know them. Eh? Now you want to bring trouble for us. As if it was missionaries that started your own state. Now, look, let me tell you something. Witchcraft, idolatry was the bane of the day in Nigeria. Everywhere. Every strait has traditionalists, herbalists, has people who are practicing witchcraft. Killing people, eating, whatever it is. It's just that some have more than some. But everybody has it. Are, are you listening to me? I'm very serious, please. As you're laughing, I hope you're getting me. So, don't ever use that as an excuse. Say, these people, everybody from their village, they, no. And now, listen, our parents, listen, our parents have had so many experiences that validate their claims. So, while you are trying to defend yourself, don't just look at them and say, old oh, generation, because I tell you something, they have testimonies of people who did not listen. Are you following me now? And they got married running down the line 10, 20, 30 years. Some of them are still suffering today. So don't just kick what the parents are saying. Can I give you an advice? If you are crossing boundaries, no three things. Number one. Number one. Wickedness, territorial wickedness is real. Write it and never forget it. If you are crossing boundary to any state or any local government, be aware of the demonic predicaments around that place. And be sure that you are ready to take the burden. Please look up. I want to be very, very, I want to speak to you tonight. Look up, please. A lady, for instance, whose whole family, she has an extended family, all right? And say they are all Muslims. Are you following me now? And only the lady got born again. Are you listening to me? Maybe her father is this and that, her mother. There are a lot in their families. Now you are coming as a brother. You say, this is the lady I'm going to marry. I hope you know that there is a battle to fight there. Everybody answer me. If you pretend and spiritualize it and trivialize it, you are going to run into a lot of trouble. Is the battle because the lady is bad? No, but you see, when you are married, you are not just married to the lady, you are married to the lady and everything associated to her. Are you listening to me? To her troublesome auntie, her diabolic uncle, they are all your relatives now. Her money mongering cousins, her materialistic nephews, all together. That's why they sold the Ashoke for you to see them on the wedding day. We are now one. Hallelujah. So when you are crossing boundaries, be very realistic. I'm telling you, be very what? One lady called me one time and I won't mention names, but her father is a bishop. You know, somewhere, I think somewhere around the maybe southern eastern side. And she told me that the guy buffs all his daughters with chicken before giving them out for marriage. The lady now, sorry. Are you listening to me? The elder sister, the father at her age, oh, 
whether whatever you, you said, that is, he said, look, you don't know what you grew up with. You are, we are the ones that have suffered this thing. Just keep quiet and let me bath you and you will go. So when it was the lady's turn now, she ran out of the house. So it was during her exodus that she called me. And she said, this is what they want to do to me. I said, you mean it? They said, they must do it. There is a covenant that had been running around their family that that's what they must do. Listen, I want to talk to you tonight. Hallelujah. So the man must bath them with chicken as they are, bath, they are making incantations. So they bath the lady. Her elder sister told her, I said, this is what I did though. That what they plan with the fiance is that immediately they finish. They just run mountain of fire straight. Lagos about that express with straight. They went there for deliverance. So they said, if you can do it. But the lady said, but I see, it's not like I'm in ignorance. This is taking myself to go and give the devil. Are you following me now? This is the reason why certain parents may not want people from certain places. That leads me to the fourth point, demonic oppression. The reason why people do not get married, demonic oppression. Demonic oppression. We live in a church that is so unaware of the activities of Satan. We are all new creation in Christ. The Bible says do not be unaware I know people have exaggerated things when it comes to Satan and the things of deliverance. But let me tell you something. Demonic oppression is real. Especially in marriage. Are you hearing me? I'm giving you a frank and candid advice. When you see us say, go out with somebody who is born again and serious with God. Some of you think, okay, you know, these guys have been... Demonic oppression is real. The euphoria of your emotional attachment will fade when those demons begin to deal with you. Hallelujah. Let me stop there. Second subtopic. So this is why people experience late marriage. Unreasonable, ridiculous expectations, health factors, geographical factors, demonic oppression. If you don't believe in marrying people from other places, pray. You can negotiate with God. He's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. If the trouble is too much, you can say, God, can you give me a brother from Kano that loves God? I'm from there. For God's sake, save me this headache. God will bring a brother. He will come for koinonia. He won't know what is bringing him. The answer to so God. No, God is faithful. Let me tell you, our relationship with God is on a personal basis. There is a way you can agree with God on some things and he will do it for you. I assure you. Hallelujah. Have I helped you? Because some of you are saying, can't we bend you? mean there's no way out. There is a way. There is a way. It's between you and God. Number two. The reasons for fight in homes and unfaithfulness. Marital fights and unfaithfulness. It's one thing to get married. It's another thing to live in that home. Is that true? Many of our homes and our marriages are shattered in pieces. And we need to find out what is wrong. Why do we have fights? Two people. Sorry. Do you accept this? What You didn't wait for them to finish talking. Do you take this lady as your wedding? Yes. Yes. You far by the grace of God, yes. Two of you said you would you are you doing yes. Think about it. Oh, yes. Does anybody have anything any, against this marriage? Nobody's now. We declare you husband and wife. You poor are hugging and kissing, and you are happy. Two years later, the man looks at you. Who did I marry? He wrote songs, called you the lily of the valley, called you all kinds of things. Sugar in his tea. Mosquito in his net. After two years, three years, there is fight. Can I tell you something? Let me run faster than myself and tell you, sex is not enough to preserve the strength of marriage. Because I have seen people with eight children. How did they get the eight children? I will kill you. This is a man that slept with his wife to have eight children. Now he will kill her.
Hallelujah. So what are the reasons? Do you know, listen, statistic tells us that one out of every two marriages in America ends up in a divorce within the first five years. Right now, this thing has gotten so bad that in many churches now, you go to church and go to court too. It wasn't really like that, but what is happening in this society now? A man can be married and leave his state and come somewhere and just be strolling, come for koinonia, see a very nice lady like this, turn her mind like a pendulum, and then get married to her, go and buy small golf and give the parents. The father will say, you must marry this guy. You must marry him. We have suffered. It's enough. Now you get married only to find out that you are the wife of somebody else's. You are a concubine. Why do we have fights? And then I want to tell you something. The rate of unfaithfulness. Listen, this is a study I made by myself. The rate of unfaithfulness in Christian marriages. I was talking with my sister yesterday and she was telling me of a survey that they did in our local church not somewhere else our local church married women that are not submissive and ladies that are promiscuous that have really spoiled i don't mean eh, okay you went and slept with somebody by mistake willful willing conscious derailing from the things of god when they announced the statistics to the church parents were afraid Parents were afraid. Fathers were afraid. Mothers. Nobody trusted themselves again. Which one are you in these statistics now? Because they didn't announce anybody's name. When my sister told me, it touched me. Hallelujah. Do you know right now, there is almost no trust in our homes. Hallelujah. Some of you, you are even in a relationship because of how the guy is behaving like an arm robber. Once he goes to his himself, you quickly carry the phone. Let me check. Who called? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then the guy will save the lady's name as Joseph. Oh, come on. We know these things. Say, ah, Joe. Yeah. When you are home, you say, ah, why are you calling me by this time now? You don't know my wife is at home. Immediately I come. Have you delivered it? Okay, I'm coming to Lagos first thing in the morning. Please don't waste my time. I, I need to spend time with my wife. I found out that I've not been spending time with her. And she's laughing. Not knowing that the man is unfaithful. So why is this happening? I can act. If ministry didn't work, I would have done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number one. The reasons why we have fights. Violating the love respect principle. How many of you remember our love respect principle? What's the principle? That husbands should do what? Love their wives. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 22 to 25. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, submit. You honor. I told you that love for a man means respect and honor. Nothing more, nothing less. To the degree to which you respect and honor your husband. That's the degree to which you love him. Hallelujah. And for the ladies, the degree to which you love her, you care for her, you give her time. Remember our five love languages. Number one, words of affirmation. Number two, eh? acts of service. Number three, receiving gifts. Only ladies are talking. Number four, quality time. Number five, physical touch. No, it's not. We're talking marriage now, so you don't need to star it. The star was before you get married. Once the pastor says husband and wife, God himself takes his tie away. Until then, God himself stamps it there. If you force the door to open, it will open. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number one, violating the love respect principle. How many men don't respect their wives? Two of them go for a program. You see the man disgracing the wife. Have you seen some of our parents do that? Don't pretend as if, and, you, and it will be paining you. You see the woman will just keep quiet. Or the woman disgracing her husband. You go, there's small popcorn. You are about leaving. Uh, Madam, can I fetch for this? You are fetching. People are saying, what kind of woman is this? The husband is just standing. You don't know that you are bearing his image. The man is saying, honey, let's go. Say, I won't go. Let me do this. Do we have this in our house? And you are just fetching. 
the love respect principle the love respect principle all the guys say i will love my wife say it i will love my wife and the lady say i will honor my husband so that's the number one reason number two i won't talk much about that we are not in a strict only few people are married here so i won't talk emotional dissatisfaction not satisfying themselves sexually and all of that leave it there i'm not saying more hallelujah thank god there's marriage counseling go to your marriage counselor hallelujah but emotional dissatisfaction and this is not just sex spending time together there is an emotional dimension is limited before you get married but when you get married come on it's part of what keeps the bond it is a very serious reason why men listen please a woman who is busy you are a tailor you are a contractor you have restaurant you are you are in french school you are learning another language every time you are your husband will say, oh, you, you are embarrassing him. You are making him beg you to sleep with you. He will keep quiet. One day he will stop talking to you. Ah! You find out that your house help is happy, walking in the house, very excited. Madam, how are you? Fine. How is everything? God has been faithful. That's a sign that there's fire on the mountain. I'm giving you an honest and a very candid advice. Listen, let me tell you something. God who designed intimacy is not foolish. Are you listening to me? Violating any of God's principle, tightening, lack of intimacy, whatever it is, will cost you a lot. Sisters, let me advise you. You are not in your house. You are supposed to preserve and help the man. Do you know the wife is supposed to cover for the man? Your husband is a nice, handsome man of God. He goes to minister in a convention. God moves and honors you. You are there snapping. And they are saying, how does it feel to be, you know, this bishop's wife? You are talking. One other lady is giving him compliments. Say, sir, uh, please, God gave me this prophetic instruction. I, I need to come and clean your shoes, clean your trousers. The man says, sir, I insist. Will you, will you hinder an innocent lady like the man? Says, All right, if you insist. Aha, uh -huh. you were not there. The media is carrying your face. You are happy. You never had it that good. Now you are enjoying it. Many women are careless about their men. I'm not saying just be irresponsible and you can't allow the man rest. He's having a meeting. You are in front of the, the meeting door. You are saying whatever this meeting is, it will finish in my presence here. There are women like that. This is insecurity. Your husband wants to book ticket. You are there. How many people? No, no. Trust. There must be trust. But in the midst of it, there are efforts that you must make. Are you listening to me? Don't allow any. You know, Christian homes, you can see a woman just come at an odd time and say, I want to come and visit your husband. She's calling him all kinds of names. An unbeliever will tell you straight there. I hope you know, unbeliever women, they, won't talk, they will say, please, Call it jealousy, call it whatever. Let me tell you, let it not happen again. Church people, say if I talk like that, what of in the fellowship? Uh -huh. It's until the man travels for a business trip, four months, you are not there. Later on, one of his friends that cannot keep his mouth shut to say, Madam, I need to talk to you. This thing is paining me and the way I trust you, I must tell you. You see that hotel there, your husband is there. Go and meet him there. For four months, he has been there abroad. Emotional dissatisfaction is a very serious issue. Are you listening to me? I didn't want to touch the issue, but it's becoming necessary. Hallelujah. Brother, you are fasting. One week, two weeks. Immediately you finish. You started Maranatha fast. You finish Armageddon fast. Now, wow. Why did you marry? Why did you marry? You would have stayed alone. There must be a place. When you get married, define your lives. Are you listening to me? 
It's very important. There's a book Ora Roberts wrote. One of the reasons why he said he was successful in ministry was he had very close sexual intimacy with his wife. I don't mean, I hope you know what I'm talking about. Some of you, your mind is already, uh -uh. to the pure, all things are pure. Hallelujah. Number three, financial issues. Sorry, my dear. Are you tired? Financial issues. Very important. Why there are fights on faithfulness, marriage, financial issues. Poverty is a very bad thing. I hope you know. Lack is a very bad thing. Finance, lack of finance has led to the breaking of many good homes. Hallelujah. Let me rush. Number four, spiritual factors. Spiritual factors. We are going to be dealing with this very extensively tonight. Spiritual factors. You married a very nice, loving, virtuous, wonderful lady. Now the lady has changed. You don't even know who you married again. Or the man has changed. The man didn't used to drink. He didn't used to smoke. He was a brother. He was even an esco in your fellowship. That's what made you like him. Now he has changed. He has a special fridge. Cronenberg. Star. Name them. They pay him salary. He comes up. 300,000 or 200,000. He comes back with 5,000. His friends have helped him finish it. Comes to vomit around. And you are saying, it wasn't like this. There are many families that have these unanswered questions. And the recommendation they gave them is go for counseling. Let me tell you something. This is not an issue of counseling. Are you hearing me? There are forces of darkness militating against families. And if you do not stand to take your position in Christ and conquer these things, you will be surprised. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Spiritual factors. You just got married and you found out that this man suddenly developed epilepsy. He wasn't epileptic. There was no problem. Stress that you cannot, you cannot imagine. You give birth to children. This child has this problem. This child has this problem. This child has this problem. It's not normal. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. The third area I want to talk about very quickly is the issue of barrenness. The reason for barrenness and unfruitfulness in marriage. In Mark 11 verse 12 to 14, when Jesus saw a barren tree, he cursed it. That means God cannot be the author of barrenness. Say amen. Are you listening to me? The command he gave man, Genesis 1 28, he said, be fruitful, multiply, For a long time, the issue of barrenness disturbed me because I've had the opportunity to pray for many people that have suffered from barrenness. And so it was a personal, it was a personal pain in my heart. And I wanted to find out why. Hallelujah. Now, the general reason for barrenness is health challenges, you know, all kind, all the whole medical things, fibroids, no womb, stories, stories, and all of that. I won't go into that. But I want to give you something very shocking. Hmm. I'm already sensing the anointing of the Holy Spirit. 98%, listen, 98% of barrenness issues in marriage is a resultant effect of satanic activities, either in the life of the individuals or tied to their family. Please listen to me carefully. Please, can you hear me? This is very serious. I want to have your attention now. 98%. Sometimes people see ladies or people that are barren and just say, ah, maybe this lady was promiscuous. No, stop judging people. I know healthy people, brothers, sisters, people who loved God, kept themselves. Now the man gets married and they start telling him all kinds of reports from the hospital. Oh, you cannot give birth. Now the lady gets married. Suddenly they tell her, there is a growth in your stomach. Where did it come from? What did I do? Listen, please. 
Please give me strings. Hallelujah. Strings. 98% of barrenness in marriage. Please listen. Because someone may be a savior. Some of you, it's time for you to set your loved ones free. This is why God is bringing this word. People have been asking questions. Why do we have this sister barren? Ah, we knew this sister, this brother barren. Can I tell you something? It is purely demonic. Purely demonic. I once spoke to a lady years ago. I wish there's a way I can see that lady again. Ah, knowledge. Years ago, this lady came to me and she told me she was crying. And she said, Sir, if I tell you what is wrong with me, you will not believe it. She talked to me. She said, I don't have a womb. It's not like I lost it. No fallopian tube, no nothing. I'm as empty as a man. Nobody knows it. She's not told anybody because some of you won't keep quiet. Hallelujah. And this lady was talking to me. Listen, you know, and then those times I was saying, Abba, don't worry. Um, you know, God will do something. God will do all of that. And the lady looked at me and she said, will I marry? I said, Abba, you marry. Do you know the question the lady asked me? She said, can you marry somebody like me? Aha. That was when the thing dawned on me that this lady was not playing games with me here. You know, sometimes you see people come for counseling. You don't know what is eating them up. I looked at this lady. I said, Lord, do you know after I left this lady, I had to go and cry to God. I said, Lord, give me the power for creative miracles or let this kind of people never come to me again. They should rather go to a man of God who can solve their problem. This is too bad. This lady left my place crying. Now you will see this lady and think she was promiscuous, isn't it? Because we are very judgmental in the body of Christ. Once you see anything, you just carry your mouth and start saying things. Uh-uh. The Bible says judge not. There's nothing. They, they said she was supposed to be a man or something, something, blah, blah, blah. And then you know all those doctors, medical, we have a doctor here. He gave a testimony. You know all those things they taught you people. Hallelujah. There are issues like that. A man gets married to his wife. One year, no child. Two years, no child. Three years, no child. What is wrong? There are even to make matters worse. There are times that they go to the hospital, the man is fine. Have you seen people like that? Fine. Nothing is wrong. The woman is fine. Three weeks ago, I was, three weeks now, yes, I was counseling and a woman came to me. Very interesting case. This woman was pregnant. Maybe you would say it's about six, seven, but they would go to the scanning machine. Huh, ladies? And then they'll find out that there's nothing. It's not like there's fibroid or mm -mm, nothing. Yeah. So when you hear me talk like this, some of you just sit down saying, I beg this. No, let me tell you. God has granted us. You can ask the ministers. They will tell you. Counseling opens your eyes to things you will not imagine. Hallelujah. One day after Koinonia, a lady walked up. No, I saw her. And I knew that something was wrong with her. And I called her. I said, what is wrong with you? And she laughed. She didn't want to tell me. And I asked her. I said, what is it? She said, there's something. It's like it looks like a worm, but a little bigger than the worm in her private part. It's a living thing. No, I'm, I'm being very honest with some of you so that you wake up tonight. We are not playing games here. We are going to pray. How do you explain this now? And the lady was looking. Immediately I looked at her. I saw the spirit. For this purpose was the son of God made manifest. There are some of you, listen. I want to teach you something tonight. 98%. Delay in marriage. For some of you, it's a curse around your family. Pronouncements and projections. Listen, your salvation affects you, not your territory. Are you listening to me? Let me teach you something here. 
your salvation does not change your territory otherwise they will not be terrorists in nigeria your salvation does not change your territory it takes an understanding of god's word and the operation of the anointing to put the devil where he belongs and release yourself from shackles darkness there are many people here there are all kinds of yokes on your life please listen to me there are many of you here you sleep in the night men come to you to have sex in your dreams they use the face of your father, mother, the face of another woman, the face of animals. You've just been laughing. That, that's, that's, that's a question mark happening there. The church does not deal with these things. We shy away. Many of you here, I tell you, because we come from an African continent. Our children will not need to go through this. But there will be a generation that must pay the price. And it so happens that we are the ones in between. Don't let anybody fool you. America is over 200 years. Some people paid the price and passed the heritage of godliness. My children will not need to go through this. Are you listening to me? But someone is got to go through this. And it so happens that you are the one. So let me announce to you, for some of you who have been trivializing things, you've been confessing God's word. People come, some of, listen, I, I want to deal with some things this night. This is pre-miracle service. There are many of you that have been oppressed. You get up, you are bedwetting. You cannot explain it to anybody. You are not bad. People cannot understand. You need help, but the church will not arise. We will keep giving all kinds of flimsy explanations. Some of you have an unusual urge for sex. You cannot, you love God, but you can't see a man or woman. This is not normal. These are operations of spirits. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? There are many of you, there's been, there's been constant happenings around your family. Everybody that marries, there is a divorce. It, it kept happening, it kept happening. Are you ready to break that cycle or you just want to watch and be saying, oh, don't worry, it won't happen to me. You will be surprised. Because it's already happening to some of you right now. This is why God gives gifts to the body. Hallelujah. Let me teach you something about spirits. Look at me. Some of you do not know that there are territorial spirits, listen please, that are are willfully given access over territories. I pray for people for deliverance almost every day. And the demons shout and what they always say is, we have legal access in this body. In the book of Jude, the Bible says, when Archangel Michael came to take the body of Moses, what happened? Satan was there claiming the body too. Satan is still claiming the bodies of people. When a demon leaves a man, the Bible says, it will go through arid regions. Hear me? Seeking for a place of refuge. He said, not finding any. He will say, let me arise and go to my house. He has gone, but he's still calling the man his house. Hmm. Hallelujah. I was born again. I was a preacher and demons were still oppressing me. Are you listening to me? I confess the word. I read the books you have read. Let me tell you something. I was moving terribly in the anointing. But demons will press me in the night. I will sleep in the night and see them come. My shouting the name of Jesus was as helpless as something was wrong. This is what has been happening to some of you. You have a dream. They are pressing you. They are oppressing you. You can't even shout Jesus. You are about to write a serious paper. The devil just comes. Somebody just sleeps with you in the dream. That's the end of it. Nothing works again. Don't let anybody deceive you. We will not lie to you in this place. The Bible says, Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. Tonight, whatever has held your destiny will bow. This is the... Re See, you, this is what many people like MFM and the rest call spirit husband and spirit wife. I know many people say, ah, there's nothing like that. Just shut your mouth. Oh. Shut your mouth quickly. Because you see, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. The Bible says the things that appear in this realm, 
that the things that are material were made from the things that are immaterial. There are, there are tribes that covenanted people to people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He said right from when you were in your mother's womb, I knew you, I called you. That means spiritual things can happen right from your mother's womb. It's in your Bible. He said while you were in your mother's womb, I called you already to be a prophet. Hallelujah. And there are many innocent believers not getting married, getting barren, giving birth to all kinds of satanic things. Do you know why Satan is frustrating you? Because you or your parents have made a decision to serve the Lord. Do you know, I was telling someone, I cannot remember, with the crude traditional African ways of giving birth, sir, we didn't have difficulty in giving birth. When a woman is giving birth, they will bring fire. And they will even use knives or something to cut the placenta. Yet women were giving birth freely. Do you know why? Because their allegiance was unto Satan. Some of our parents got up and said, look, this is over. And the devil says, you have declared war. This is the mark. And some of you sit down and just laugh. You like a cool, smooth, nice message that just tells you everything is all right. Yes potentially but you need to get up and make it so he says we have seen everything under his feet he said but we do not yet see i'm, I'm sorry he said he was raised made a little lower than the angels crowned with glory and honor he said but we do not see all things under his feet that means all things have not yet come experientially hallelujah there are the bible says blotting out every handwriting what is what was paul seeing when he was saying this what did Paul see? Where did they write the handwritings? There are all kinds of diabolic ordinances against people. Some of you, this is what is responsible for your marital predicament. No man comes around you. Or only married people. Only married people. Don't say the, there is nothing. No. By now you know that mistakes don't happen in the realm of the spirit. The Lord told me to preach this and set people free this night. Are you listening to me? Delay. Delay. Nothing works. A man will come into your life. You will do the introduction. Later he will get up and become a strange man to you. Don't you see what is happening in the realm of the spirit? Many of you are not reading the handwritings on the wall. Counseling is not the solution. The devil needs to experience the power of the kingdom. This is what will put him to flight. He said, how awe-inspiring are your ways. Through the greatness of thy power, not through noise, not through counseling, will thy enemies submit themselves. There are ladies, any man that comes into your life, this spirit will frustrate the guy and bastardize his life. You are a good person. There are ladies, anytime you enter a relationship with them, the guy must die. It has happened and they are just giving useless explanations. Beautiful lady, virtuous, submissive. No guy will ever see you. Listen, some of you, once a guy sees you, all he wants is to sleep with you. No responsible man can see you. Only touts and armed robbers and drug barons, they are the ones who can see you. Something is wrong. Is someone hearing me tonight? We are going to pray. If you came here, this is how we are rounding up this series. Hallelujah. Some of you would have been married since. But because of this wickedness. The devil laying claims over your marital life and destiny. Every night, some of us cannot sleep snakes everywhere to the point that some of you even see them physically i've counseled people one time a lady came inside uh, uh, we were counseling immediately the lady came inside she just came in what the next thing i saw a snake maybe like twice this just by her side i said my dear what is this that i'm seeing and she said sir this is why i came what is this thing some of you come from royal families. Ordinances have been made against you. Let me tell you, if you do not rise up in the name of the Lord, be ready, there is trouble. The day you gave your life to Christ, you declared war. The devil marked the line and it takes authority to put him where he belongs. 
Joe, you were with me in Mina. Please stand up. He was with me when I went for the crusade in Mina. What was the rampant case there? Blindness, deafness. The women, once they give birth, they become deaf and dumb. Ask him, he was there. The first day of the crusade, God moved and mighty things happened. The second day of the crusade, after the crowd, they created a special session for the sick people. If you're a man of God, you will tell us today. They lined from one end, a large crowd to the other end. Ask him, there were over maybe 60 or so people. Those days, when we didn't have this understanding, we'll come and be struggling, trying to heal the sick. Ah, uh ah, -uh, now we know better. I knew that this is about a territory. This is about a territory. I settled it in my secret place. More than 40 of the people. I was lifting them from their wheelchairs. Stand up. See, once the strong man, no man will enter into a man's house and spoil the goods without binding the strong man. I give you spiritual knowledge. Many of you, God will set you on fire. You need to go back home and say, Aha, now I know the answer. This is it. This is it. No guesswork again. This is it. Hallelujah. I barely came to the people. Just one touch. Ear open. Eyes open. The mute were speaking. Now this before it will be a spectacular miracle for me. But now I know better. There are many of you you are you think dating.com or whatever is the solution let me tell you tonight you are going to humble yourself there are many of you in the you see all kinds of things some of you are christians but there are demonic diabolic ordinances i once prayed for a lady who told me that voices she hears voices they tell her the things to do she was walking one time and this thing ladies like putting on their waist. It was on the ground. And the voice said, carry it and put. No man except you are on fire. See, brothers, let me tell you. If you are not on fire, I don't know how to help you. You will fall like a leaf. There are many ladies that come for counseling. As soon as they enter, I see the spirit of seduction. And I know that if not because I've, I've declared my stand unto God, you will be surprised. Because they tell me how many pastors, even in this area, that they sleep around with men and women who stand on your pulpits and speak nonsense hallelujah tonight I'm angry in my spirit because some destinies will be opened some of your parents in a bid to help you when you were sick or something ran to the village is that true please answer me is that true you were getting admission and they ran they came and said, okay, please, we want her to pass this. They did it out of innocence because that's all they knew. But let me tell you something. The devil never gives you anything free. Make no mistakes about it. You will collect the goods now and pay for it later on. Okay. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? This is the problem with many of you. Your kingdom reigns. His kingdom reigns. Above all. Above all, Lord, your kingdom reigns. Above all, above every cultural kingdom, above every ordinance of darkness, your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. Above all. Above all, yeah, Lord, your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. Above all, let me tell you something about the operation of these wicked spirits of darkness. They will not only wreck your marital life. Your academics will be shattered. Your personal self will shattered. Sicknesses you cannot account for. This is what many of you are suffering. Please 
hear me tonight don't trivialize what you are listening to this could be the key that will help you maritally this could be the key i tell you when you dethrone satan you will be shocked the way doors will start opening for you hallelujah i'm going to pray enough is enough you can't be living like this except god has not called us except god has not sent us part of our mandate is to set the captives free i'm not a pastor our mandate is to set the captives free there are many of you that you, you are you are trusting god for marriage this year but the way things are going except god intervenes it will not work it will not work hallelujah there are some of you you are a row of ladies in your house nobody has married a row of people four five ladies nobody has married one brother just comes two days he's not serious let me tell you if this is my wife and bishop stan wants to come and collect her if i'm a responsible man you think i'll just allow him what will you do you will fight unto death they laid cold over the body of moses there are many barrenness issues some of your loved ones they are busy insulting your sister calling her a witch and see listen i must balance this before we pray listen this is where you need to be careful with prophets because this lady look at me please let me teach you something listen this sister here can be affected by a lot of demonic things from her she may not even know as a prophet i can stand and i can see a demon behind this lady it does not mean she's a witch this is demonic oppression are you hearing me i may pray for her you see people who came for koinonia here roll on the floor they are not witches many prophets have caused trouble in the body of christ they keep blaming people a woman comes now you come and pray for her a woman came to me she came to complain about her husband they were actually a woman brought them two of them they were quarreling the woman was this and that and that and that and then the husband now started calling the woman a witch that a prophet told him his wife is a witch he should, he should leave her alone as i was talking to her i now saw the spirit and the woman started manifesting the man said you see you see what i'm saying confirmation immediately i i finished the spirit in him jumped up and wanted to run out he scattered the things there scattered my table when he finished i said who now is a witch among two of you Are you listening to me very important you may not know the things you are dabbling into and if spiritual knowledge is not given unto you you will not the bible says through wise counsel make war some of you will be settling things this is pre-miracle service i tell you don't miss next week's miracle service what god will do in this place will surprise you if you are coming here and you are not blessed we are fake are you listening to me if nothing is changing that means that means maybe we went to one shrine for something to pour on our head but i tell you there is a living god in this place are you ready we are going to pray go back sweetheart one prayer point and i'll begin ministering listen you are going to pray this night tonight is not a night of shame tonight is the night when you will end some things some of you have struggled with pornography master you can't help it this is demonic you don't conquer demonic things by willpower Brothers, it takes the anointing. It takes the anointing. There are many of you, you can't keep one relationship. You love a lady, two days later, you don't love her again. You think something is wrong. You go to another lady, two days later, you can't love her again. You, you are married, but you can't see another woman move. Come on, this is demonic. The Bible says, he that conceals his sin shall not prosper. We are going to rise tonight. Everybody rise up. I tell you the devil the devil is in trouble whatever allowed you to come here tonight is in trouble hallelujah now we are going to pray just for three or four minutes you're going to pray and say lord whatever stronghold in my life whatever i don't care where it's coming from lord this night 
you are going to visit me some of you know what i'm talking about the snakes in your dreams the men that come to oppress you these satanic kings outside inside make sure you are praying enough is enough the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted to set the captives free upon mount zion there shall be deliverance upon mount zion there shall be deliverance and holiness satan you are in trouble tonight satan you are in trouble the strong man against families tying their marital destinies your time is up tonight pray like a priest pray like a priest pray for your family members pray for your loved ones pray for the buried people in your family that barrenness you have come to your end tonight light shines in the darkness one more minute come on pray enough is enough as soon as zion travels Hallelujah. 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 Oh, it will end. It will end. Please be in the mode of prayer. We are serious in this place. If your neighbor is distracting you, tell him, don't distract me. Don't distract me. Don't distract me. Enough is enough. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Listen. I'm going to pray for people right now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me people. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for people. Oh, there will be mass, mass, listen, mass emancipation. Some of you who did not know that what is happening to you is demonic, you'll be surprised. Don't forget about your neighbor. Hallelujah. This spirit that comes to oppress you, hear me. Whether carrying the face of your brother, your mother, another woman, I don't care. Telling you they are married to you, listen to me. I tell you, I see fire in this place. Hallelujah. And I'm going to pray. Whether you fall down or not is, is not the issue. Right now. Believe and expect. There is a lady in that row. I see a spirit manifesting. Say snake kate lakanda. Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. We are going to shout the name Jesus once. My God, my God. Hallelujah. I tell you, I want you to shout it with faith. There is noise that will hit the gates of darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now hear me. Hear me. There are many of you snakes snakes the bible says i have given you authority luke 10 19 over snakes there is a reason why the bible calls snakes and scorpions lift your hands i'm going to pray the power of god will move in a mighty way anyone here that has been initiated into any demonic thing whether you know it or you do not know it right now lord jesus let the power of god move be it in dreams move i set you free right now right now right now right now right now be free be free be free come out of her out come out come out come out 
come out of her. The children shall not suffer the iniquity. Every occult initiation, every initiation through sex, through dreams that will close the doors of your marital life. I challenge it. I challenge it. Hallelujah. Let her go. Come out of her. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. This is a snake. Come out. Come out right now. Out of her. Come out. Go. Go right now. Listen. You are being delivered though. Don't wait till you fall. Something is happening. The presence of God is in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Ladies, say after me, I'm wonderfully and fearfully made. My body. Look at me. Look at me. Come. Come. Leave her, leave her. Shall the captives be delivered? Let this girl go now. Let this girl go now. The fire of the Holy Ghost is against you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Listen. Do you know for some of you, this is what spilled over into your academics. Many of you may not know. This is why no matter what you do, things don't happen. Don't miss miracle service. Sister, come. This is what you have suffered. Come, you. The lady put in her hand. Come out. Come, it's time for God to help you. No, you, you. The lady with pink, come. Please hurry up, we're out, we're out of time. There's fire burning all over this building. That devil... Look at me, sister. You have suffered. Your academics is not very good. This is a spirit. You are not lazy. Look at me. Look at me. Hallelujah. I set you free. It will cough out something now. That devil of darkness. In the name of Jesus. Let this girl go free. In the name of Jesus. Now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. See. Now in the next two to three minutes. You are going to pray for your family members. That as you are praying. Don't keep quiet. Some of you. Your sisters have suffered. If you can invite them here. For miracle service invite them if you cannot pray lift your voice say satan enough in my family enough pray pray Satan, I stand representing my family. Get lost. Get lost. Get lost. I set altars of darkness on fire. Get lost. Outside are you praying? Outside are you praying? Outside are you praying? Get the book of 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 the book
My family comes under divine protection. My family, pray for your sister, pray for your brothers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what is happening in many of our homes. This is why daddy is fighting with mommy. Hallelujah. Right now in the next two minutes, I want you to cause, listen, any seed of barrenness, whether in your life, ladies, I want you to pray this. If you need to lay hands on your womb, lay hands on your stomach, do it. Pray for your sisters at home. Pray. I am fruitful. Pray. I am fruitful. No devil. No devil. Please take this prayer seriously. Take this prayer seriously. The Bible says, be fruitful. I am fruitful. I am fruitful. No barrenness. No barrenness. No barrenness. Ladies, pray. No fibroids. No demonic clothes. No fibroids. Guys, pray. Every devil of impotency is cursed. Pray for your family members. Barrenness. Hear the word of the Lord. Barrenness. I don't care how long. I don't care how long. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye. The power of God is still moving. The power of God is still moving. Let her go. Come out. Come out now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I want to pray for you. We're out of time. Lift your hands, everybody. If it doesn't apply to you what I'm saying, you can connect for your parents or your family members. Any lady here or any woman with any demonic growth called fibroid or any kind of cyst, listen, in the name that is above all names, I curse it right now. I curse it right now. I cut that growth away from your body. I flush it out of your body. I flush it out of your body. Any satanic medical condition, whether your fallopian tube is blocked, you don't have womb, even if you lived a promiscuous life before and you lost a womb, I create a new one right now. When God forgives sins, he forgives the consequences. Hallelujah. I pray whatever has held your marital destiny, that the man that is destined for you cannot come or you cannot get married right now. Be released. Be released. Be released. I release you. Enter your marital destiny. Enter your marital destiny. I command it. Enter your marital destiny. Enter your marital destiny. Hallelujah. Whoever has been tied here in any wrong ordinance, whether it was unknowing, some of you enter relationships, you go and cut yourself, cut the guy, 
drink your blood you call it love this is nonsense but i want to pray for you now the bible says the blood of jesus speaketh better things than the blood of abel satan hear my voice over the lives of these people i command right now take your hands away take your hands away take your hands away lift up your heads all you gates be ye lifted ancient doors ancient doors every altar of darkness my bible says whatever has not been planted by god will be uprooted i uproot i tear down i set on fire in the name of jesus every spirit of lust every spirit of lust please lift your hands and pray for everybody every spirit of lust that keeps taking you back into immorality whether you want it or not right now in the name of jesus i set you free i set you free i set you free receive it receive freedom against lust hallelujah anyone here under the curse of habit lesbianism homosexuality look you must not be just lift your hands i'm praying for you don't say i'm not uh -uh. whether homosexuality listen lesbianism all kinds of things there are people that sleep with animals and do i'm speaking for the sake of the many who will be hearing not necessarily just you there are some of you ladies you have affection for one another guys affection you think it's normal this is satanic right now in the name of jesus i deliver you from this curse in the name of jesus be free be free be free Finally, I pray for you. Whatever you have lost because of the times of ignorance, some of you have suffered heartbreaks, some of you have suffered a lot of things, I pray. There is a God that can restore the years canker worms have eaten. Lift your hands, I want to pray. This is finally. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that for many people between now and miracle service, give them a big miracle. Between now and miracle service, you will testify on Friday upon this altar. You will testify. I release breakthrough. Breakthrough that will bring restoration. You will testify. I open doors of favor, doors of grace, doors of academics. I challenge darkness. You will sleep like a baby. No more fibroid. No more growths. No more pains. No more aches. You are free. All the spirits that come to torment you, you will see them no more. You will sleep like a baby forever. Hallelujah. So it's important for you to be ready to wave goodbye to all of the challenges that you made so much sacrifice to come here to present to God. Don't sit down and hope that, oh God, um, well, let's see what you will do. No, no. Remember, remember, I have taught you, for those of you coming for the first time, listen. The very factor that is responsible for results in the kingdom is the anointing, his divine power. Your faith only connects you to the anointing. It is not your faith as it were that brings you results. Your faith is like a host that connects the tap to the plant that needs refreshing but is the power of God and let me tell you sincerely where the power of God is lavishly allowed to find expression then darkness must flee then lives must change then situations must be transformed are we together now expect the hand of God do you know it's amazing how that you will see people gathered like this and you will think just because they are looking at a preacher, they are expectant. Many people are used to God not working in their lives. To the point that they don't expect anything. They may look and say amen and hope that they will get something. There is a level of hunger and desperation 
like Jacob where you tell the Lord I did not leave the east the south the west I didn't travel out of this nation to come into Nigeria come into Zaria just to watch people get healed get blessed and share the grace and go back no there is a level of insistence insistence give us Hebrews chapter 11 please and verse 6 just a charge and then we'll minister tonight but without faith the Bible says it is impossible to please him the him there is God for he that cometh to God this is a rule this is a spiritual law that he that comes to God must believe that he exists and then number two that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him do you not know that transporting yourself from the great distance you came from is proof of diligence is proof that you trust God you held that report you held that cancer report you held that this and that report and you continue to believe God our assignment is continue to align in prayer and through sacrifice to say Lord continue to multiply your anointing so that the issue that could not be solved in January can be solved in March I've taught you how the anointing works and let me just teach it very quickly for the sake of those of us who may be encountering this ministry for the first time I taught you that the anointing works like money listen very carefully that you only can solve spiritual problems or problems that are within the level of the grace you carry the same way you can have 10,000 naira 10,000 naira can buy you a few things it cannot buy you a car it cannot buy you a house but it is still money if you need to buy a house you need more of the same thing to the amount that can purchase the house every challenge in the realm of the spirit has a level of grace and anointing that can solve it just because you are anointed does not mean all problems will bow I gave an example yesterday while I was teaching in Abia and I told them that you can bring someone for instance in a wheelchair and keep the person outside and the man of God can even lay hands on the person and the person may not be healed you he go back sick are we together now you take the same person and keep that person in Benny Hinn's overflow not the main bowl overflow and right there he comes and whilst he's singing the person gets up the difference is not God the difference is the extent of the anointing how God anointed Jesus not that Jesus was anointed the information is not that he was anointed look at the extent to which he was anointed you are a blessing when you stay with God to be anointed to the degree to which most problems that come are under the level of your grace people have come to me and with all humility as soon as they begin to talk I discern what their challenges are and I know that this problem is far far below the level of the grace that I have sometimes I would not even pray I would say go it's done so the, the man of God's assignment is that while you are building your expectation while you are paying so much to transport yourself to be here, while you are fasting and opening your heart, our own assignment is to stay with God, to say, I've seen your grace before, but evil is multiplying. There are situations that know there are superior levels of graces that can solve it. When someone loses 10 million naira, and comes to you and says i'm about to die i don't know whether i'm alive or not but the last time they told me i was dying help me at that point that's not the time to start teaching him and say okay be patient this is you can teach him financial principles but he needs that raven that fed elijah to come to him quick let the raven feed him first when someone tells you my life it's not moving forward all doors are closed and because of that my father is about to leave my mother they have concluded that the divorce will happen in the month of may that's not the time to settle down and start saying oh this and that line upon line precept they are, they are, a, a family is about to be torn apart oh how we need the power of god in this generation 
We need the power of God more than falling down. We need the power of God more than the jargons and the stories that we talk. Let me tell you, in the final analysis, it is his divine power that is the giver. And if that power is not resident within you to the degree that it takes to provide supernatural solutions, then you will continue to see people frustrated. If you're a man of God and you came here, listen to me. You are not a blessing when you are not anointed. Let me repeat myself. You are not a blessing when you are not anointed. You may be a good person. You may be a sincere person. It takes more than sincerity to be a blessing. The Messianic prophecy, Isaiah chapter 61. Please give it to us. Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me and then he says because the lord hath anointed me the lord had done what please talk to me koinonia the lord had anointed me so the factor there is the anointing and then he begins to list all the possibilities that can now happen on account of the anointing it takes the anointing to preach glad tidings to the meek it takes the anointing to bind up the brokenhearted. It takes the anointing to proclaim liberty. It doesn't take a mouth to proclaim liberty. It takes the anointing. You can have the mouth and say be free. But it takes the anointing to proclaim liberty to the captives. It takes the anointing to open up prison doors. Next verse. It takes the anointing to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then the year of vengeance of our God. Look up please. It takes the anointing to comfort all those who mourn. Verse 3. To appoint to them that mourn in Zion. So even in Zion there are those who mourn. It didn't say to appoint to them that mourn outside Zion. They are in Zion, yet they are mourning. To give them beauty. Look at what the anointing can do. Hi. The anointing, please listen, listen, families, listen. The anointing can give a man beauty. Beauty, beauty for ashes. Many families know what ashes looks like. When a family has 10 people and no one is employed. When a family has 10 people and the highest earner in that family earns 2,000 per month. Ashes. But the Bible says by the anointing you can give men beauty. Beauty. You came for koinonia with ashes. And God says keep your ashes here. Take beauty. As you are sharing the grace, you are walking out with it. And then you continue to see your life. You know you have carried beauty by the results that follow. It says, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. Then it says, the wilderness shall be counted for a fruitful vine. And then the fruitful vine counted for a forest. Beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And then it says that they might be called the trees or oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. God is still beautifying the lives of people. My brothers and my sisters, don't get used to your situation. I know you've trusted God in spite of it. But God wants you to now continue trusting him without it. It's, it's honorable and it is noble to trust God in spite of it. But what if he takes the pain away? What if he takes the situation away? What if he takes the predicament away? It takes a wicked man of God to watch what is going on in this country. And to watch what is going on in the times that we live in. And act as if nothing is happening to people. There are real problems. Poverty is a real problem. Young people now have high blood pressure because after spending 10 years for a four-year course and graduating with a 2-1, you are roaming around the street like an armed robber with your certificate that seems to have no value. Look at the, you know, we, we've, we've been talking about, I don't know if it's happening only in Zaria, 
but we've been talking about the increased rate of suicide especially among young people when you sit down and try everything and it does not work you just tell yourself i'm better off dead and you at least my money cannot rent a house but it can buy a rope what can it buy a rope and the spirit of death will help you to buy a rope and you find a tree and hang yourself and you who should have been a blessing to a family has now died and then people come to church with that kind of pain and a man of God says don't worry it's not all about your needs it's about Jesus I agree it's about Jesus but man was not designed to bend that law indefinitely there has to be an opportunity given when the spirit of the Lord will step into the lives of people I will never never watch people go through things that the power of God can change and act as if nothing can be done about it no sir whoever told you that the power of God cannot do anything about the demons that oppress families whoever told you that the yokes of darkness can remain unhindered I know you have prayed I know you have fasted but I've told you why it did not happen it takes a level of grace whoever told you favor has stopped working don't generalize pain there are men who have found Goshen a place of safety there are men who have found Bethel there are men whose lives are like Beulah and Hephzibah the planting of the Lord when God plants a garden will it not grow he says the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified this is the place of encounter I want you to know that this is a place where God increases your convictions this is the place of surrender to, to me what you want this is the place where your life will change do to me what you want listen when the lord turn again the captivity of your family when the lord turn again the captivity of your destiny it says we were like them that dream how beautiful is it to see the other side of pain how beautiful is it to see the other side of a man's trusting God? How beautiful it is to see a man trusting God for grace. Lord, I know you still anoint men, but where is the anointing? When you see the other side of that man. How beautiful it is to see a wilderness turn into a fruitful vine and turn into a forest. I believe in miracles. I believe in the hand of God. I believe the supernatural can invade the world of men and correct and adjust things. I believe in 24 hours God can change a man's life. Listen, I believe in the law of process, but I believe in speed too. I believe God still lifts men. I believe God still uses men to make statements in a territory. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And God says, come, let me use you. Let me show men that I am still God, the lifter of men. I believe this. I believe that God is a healer. I believe he's a deliverer. I believe when men lose things, they can get it back. Yes, sir. Including time. Including time. I believe that when men lose things, they can get it back. I believe God can anoint ordinary men. Men who are just available. But the level of grace is not there. But I know there is a place a man can come to where you encounter the power of God. Everywhere is not the same. No. No. God is everywhere, 
but he does not manifest his power everywhere i believe in the power of god i was sent not only to reveal his face but to reveal his power to let men know that he's still alive to correct misunderstandings about god please listen to me i want to charge your faith before we pray i believe that challenges can end i believe that problems can end did you hear what i said i believe a man can sit down and search left and right and only see the goodness of god i believe it i believe it i believe prosperity is real i don't believe prosperity destroys a christian I believe in the blessing of the Lord. I believe in what it can do to your family. I believe in what it can do to your children. I believe in what it can do to your health. I know poverty causes sickness. I know it causes worry. Nobody will preach into embracing nonsense. No. I believe a man can prosper even as his soul prospers. I believe in speed. I believe God can compress what should happen in five years in one month. I truly believe it. I truly believe it. I believe God can restore time. When a woman has been barren for seven years, if she gives birth to one baby, we thank God, but it's not a statement enough. When she gives birth to triplets, God took nine years of space in three, three years and compressed it in one year. Now, that's victory over time. The hardiness of the hearts of men will require some dimensions of results to break their pride to honor God. Please listen, let me tell you. We are not going to use stories and noise to get people to Jesus. Wealth is a weapon. The anointing is a weapon. Favor is a weapon. Mercy is a weapon. Wisdom is a weapon. What are you fighting with? Desire, you will not win. It takes you being equipped with the spiritual arsenals that have been made for the victory of the saints in light. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. I believe a man can weary the devil to a point where he will let you go. I believe you can live in a territory and create your own climate financially, spiritually. I believe it. Listen, out of everything I'm saying, throw away the ones you don't believe and open your heart to the ones you believe. I believe a believer can serve God better in an atmosphere of comfort when your children's school fees are paid you will serve God better don't let religion come with the pride of men and pretend that it does not matter yes I know that none of these things should affect our love for God but let me tell you the truth there is a level of pain you continue to have that can harden your heart towards God it takes time to know God it takes time to serve God. And that's the time the devil does not want to give you. You will never have time to serve God when you are moving around chasing money. You will never have time to serve God when you are moving around lobbying a way to, to be lifted. Vain is the help of man. People of God, please hear me. God did not gather us tonight to waste our time. He gathered us tonight to make real the things in our lives that pertain unto life and godliness. Can I tell you this? Whether you believe in what I said or not, it does not change the truth. The truth was buried. It took only three days. It came out. So whether you believe in the truthfulness of what is said or not, you embrace poverty and see what it does to your life and your family. Embrace mediocrity and see what it does embrace sickness and see how much you will spend per week your entire resources 
when you are finally broke then the person will die is that sickness why will it ten, take 10 years to build one house is that a testimony a prostitute will sleep with a man overnight and wake up by the next day with estates and houses and everything let's be careful the things we say about God because many of them are not true please hear me especially for our precious visitors don't magnify your challenges and come hoping God will change your life we are talking God here not a doctor not a consultant not an architect not a monarch the God of the universe you may not be sick in your body but who told you he cannot change your life do you not know he's called the father of spirits that God can speak to a man while you are here and compel him to bless you that God can give you a dimension of grace that you didn't enter this building with you and you turn back and on Sunday you climb your pulpit as usual and suddenly fire a new dimension of grace do you believe in what I'm sharing if you been evil know how to give good gifts let me tell you you can hold on to the hands of God and say it was never about your hands it was about your heart but tonight I need your hands to in addition to your heart step in over my life step in please don't give up on God wake up don't give up on God don't come here hoping I've waited waited the God of heaven can compress time if you don't believe all this there's no point being here tonight because we are going to pray and you must insist that tonight is not the night when I will clap for anybody I came to mean business with my destiny listen when we begin to pray I like you to insist that anything that does not bring glory to God in your life must leave this night no matter what it is some of you may need to rewrite your prayer request again because of your pain you've stopped writing some things you just concluded that God this one just just leave this issue no when it was time to resurrect Lazarus he said roll away the stone roll away the stone proof that you believe in resurrection by rolling away the stone two things men did they rolled away the stone and they lose the man what if they lose Lazarus and they found out he was not alive or he just fell and collapsed? Your destiny must open up tonight. It's not a blessing for people to doubt. The Bible says to be diligent in these things, to prove your calling and election, to make it sure. There are things that must be in your life to validate your call and your election. If you're a man of God here, trust God for grace, for God's sake. Just go and stand before people and just open a scripture and speak and close it and say, let's pray. No. That's what the scribes did all the time. But Jesus came and opened and read the messianic prophecy. And he said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. They thought they would share the grace. He closed it and he told the guy with the withered hand. He said, stretch your hands. These things I write to you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Not teach alone. Do and teach. Can we pray? Please find a serious neighbor. And I like you to pray from the depth of your heart. 
the gift is only given to them that ask. God cannot assume you desire it. Please lift your voice in one minute and cry to the God of heaven. Outside, pray. Those following online, pray. Lord, visit me. Lord, visit me. Appear to me by your word as it were in Shiloh. Pray over your ministry. Pray over your business. Pray over your career. Pray over your destiny. Lord, I came that the gates be open tonight. Elam shalawa kasala kaparatus, empra kato sekede kaparianda kapariasha. Pray, pray. That devil must leave my destiny today. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Pray, pray, don't look around. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Place something upon my life, oh God. Place something upon my destiny, upon my business, upon my church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more prayer point, and the Lord will set this place on fire. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Read with me, please, if you are a believer. One, two, read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Lord, do to me as you have spoken. You said many things about my life. Do it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. Do to me as you have spoken. You said I am the head and not the tail. Do to me. You said with favor shall you encompass me as a shield. Do to me. You said you will restore the years the canker worm has eaten. Do to me, oh God. Pray, do to me, oh God. Visit my family. You said you will wipe away every tear. You call 2019 my year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Do to me as you have spoken. Do to me, oh God. You said I will have my child in 2019. Do to me as you have spoken. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
look up I want you to receive every grace that the Lord is going to be releasing in this place because you see let me tell you every grace supplied to you is the strength to survive the squallow of any season and if you do not obtain the requisite level of grace for any season you will find out that your life will remain barren and unfruitful. Truly, I came, I came with all my heart tonight. I, I don't want it to be a miracle service that we just play around casually. Please believe for something to come upon your life. Believe for a grace to come on your life. See, this thing about anoint, if it's not there, it's not there. Period. Very simple. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray. I will stand tonight praying on the grace for speed. Hold on, hold on. Please listen. There is a reason why I continue to say this. Many destinies are too slow to glorify God. Are we together now? When the devil cannot keep you at a standstill, then your progress will be so slow. It is said, I must walk the walks of him while it is day. That means I need to gain time. It says, For the night cometh when no man will walk again. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, there is a real grace for speed. If you have not seen it, it's because it's not on your life. There is a real grace for speed that vetoes the sentiments of men. So I want to pray. I want to start from there. And then we just allow the Lord to take us. Be conscious of what comes upon you. Be conscious of what comes upon you. That's how God answers prayers. He answers prayers by putting something on your life. That will compel creation to begin to act in a way and a manner that will change your life. Are we together? Please lift your hands and let me pray. I believe in the grace for speed. I have seen a measure of that grace. And I know it is true. That God can shift a man. I'm going to pray and release this grace and inside and outside that anointing and the anointing works let me just tell you 
the anointing works, you will see people begin to run. It's, it's not anything superstitious. It is just the character and the operation of that anointing. We need it. The Lord put it in my heart. We need it for our businesses, ministries, and so on and so forth. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare right now, inside and outside, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I declare right now, at the count of three, let this grace for speed that you have provided even for this season, let it rest on people now. I release that grace. Take that grace now. Please bring them out. Take that grace now, inside, outside, everywhere. I activate the operation of this grace. I shift your life in the name of Jesus to strange dimensions in the spirit. Receive the grace for speed. Receive the grace for Habakatalika Parusia. Receive that grace for speed in the name of Jesus. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab to Jezreel. I command speed, 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 speed. Bring them out. Speed. Help that woman, please. My God. I'm still praying in the name of Jesus. It says, Ye have encompassed this mountain for too long. Turn ye not what? I prophesy again. Like, like, like fire from heaven. Let that grace for speed mantle a family now not just an individual let it come upon families families receive speed i shift you i shift you in the spirit new level speed speed bring them out speed you will never be the same never be the same i'm not praying for individuals now i'm praying for families any families stagnated here i stand by the power of the holy ghost and i prophesy speed inside and outside i release speed right now now the Lord is that spirit he says and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing chains on people's legs chains and the Lord is saying the Lord is bringing deliverance now I'm seeing chains if you are under this category as I'm praying now the fire of God I'm seeing fire moving but not on people's heads, on people's feet. I decree and declare, is it not written that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. At the count of three, anyone whose destiny has been pegged by these chains, I declare be free now. Be free now. Let the power of God come upon you. Be free now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Be free now. I want to pray God I'm telling you I'm seeing this is I'm still seeing it chains you see let me tell you this look up look up the Bible tells us that there are many things that should happen where the Spirit of the Lord is one of it is Liberty do you know what Liberty is It's a separation between you and the obstacle that mocks God in your life there is such a thing in the dealings of God with men has given men liberty I want to pray there will be a mighty deliverance right now many of you this is what has plagued your life if it is true that victory was wrought on the cross then it's time to establish it now please listen to me just follow with the instructions be childlike in your heart 
and let God give you a testimony. Are we together now? He said, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears, sowed weed among the, I meant, uh, uh, among the, 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 the wheat. And he, we are going to destroy everything. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. I'm going to pray and at the count of three, I will ask you to shout that name. I don't know what kind of bondage I'm seeing this night. But except God is not God, you must be free. Right now, in the name that is above all names, I pray for individuals and families alike. It is true that there are yokes and ordinances of darkness that have held men bound. But in the name of Jesus, everywhere here overflow, one, two, three, outside. As you shout that name that is above all names, I decree and declare that everything that is not the planting of God in your life and family must jump out of your destiny at the count of three one two three shout jesus i command forces and your go now go now release destiny release destiny Every ordinance that is not the planting of God, let it go now. Let it go now. I'm speaking by what I'm seeing in the spirit. Let it go now. I'm seeing a vision of a man with a handkerchief wiping the tears of a woman and I know that this is, is symbolic because the woman stands for the bride, the church and I'm seeing the Bible says he will wipe away every tear I don't know what family and what person came here crying but the Bible says to comfort they that mourn. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, let an anointing come upon your life now that terminates everything that brings tears. That terminates everything that brings tears. Bring them out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Young lady, please shift this one. You, lift your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah say Oh yeah yeah Oh yeah yeah Oh yeah yeah Oh yeah My friend lift your hands this yes you the Lord is granting you the spirit of revelation I saw something come upon your eyes and the Lord is saying he's taking you to dimensions of revelation let her go now now release her family now in the name of Jesus please listen 
I, I know that we don't have time, but please, I want you to, every time the Lord shows me this, then I know that he wants me to move around. I begin to see lights, a similitude of angels by my left and right. And it's, it's, a, very, it's a very mysterious way that God moves to touch people. When this begins to happen, all I need to do is you don't have to touch me, just move around your road. Listen to me, except God is not God. As he has anointed, as I pass your row, if there is anything that is not of God, it must let you go. Are we together now? So please, you pray. The moment we do that, then we'll begin to minister to the sick. These things are signs and wonders. They are supernatural. They are supernatural even by the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Please... I just want you to believe by faith just believe by faith and then as i pass the lord is going to touch you it will be the end of it's not something you can do anything about you are under the influence of the anointing are we together now thank you jesus that everything that is not of god must give way in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare right now by the power of the holy spirit let there be liberty now liberty now in the name of jesus madam be free i take it out of your life now the hand of god is upon you in the name of jesus christ receive the lord is touching you i'm seeing god's taking something out of someone's stomach here is going now now i release it now be free now be free now be free now in the name of jesus be free now i'm seeing fire rising from this road just from i don't know who it is but fire is coming on someone from this road Right now, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Something is leaving you. I'm standing here. There is the power of the Holy Spirit is setting someone free here within this place right now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ.
in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus help that woman please she's holding a baby in the name of Jesus Christ I stretch my hands here everything that must leave anyone I declare it must go now by the power of the Holy Ghost by the power of the Holy Ghost hallelujah please all of you here just lift your hands right now I stretch my hands now something is coming on people right here be free now 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 keep praying lift your voice overflow one keep praying something is about to change in your life now please you don't have to touch me and I want you to help everybody close to you as I pass the anointing of the spirit is touching everything that needs to leave thank you Jesus be free now 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 that anointing is touching you right now be free be free be free be free I take it out of you right now the fire of the Holy Spirit right here where I'm standing right here where I'm standing the Lord is taking something out of your life be free I'm standing here and the Lord is saying it is over he's speaking to someone it is over an anointing is coming on you now it is over 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 madame be free now the power of God is touching someone here in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus be free be free be free be free, be free. please help them help your neighbor so they don't enjoy themselves be free now in the name of Jesus I declare and declare be free be free be free every devil of darkness be free now. please open your heart and receive stretch my hands here anything that help be free now be free now be free now be free now I'm seeing a chain a chain around here I don't know who that person is but I lose you now as I stand here I lose you now by the spirit of the living God I lose you now I lose you now hallelujah overflow one I don't know if I'm able to walk around it's working now please believe it's a few minutes God is touching you you came here so that he will visit you it's impossible to not testify now please look at me overflow too I'm not going to pass in your midst I will walk right here and as I walk the power of the Holy Spirit will begin to touch you thank you Jesus be free now be free now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit now 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 be free I take away every reproach I take away every reproach you can't stand it no it's impossible it's impossible we're talking of the anointing here every reproach go now every reproach go now every reproach go now I stretch my hands here go now go now every reproach every reproach go now go now I release your destiny all of you standing here I'm passing now the power of God is coming on you be free praise the Lord okay um, I'm going to walk around I may not go row by row please let your heart be open please except God is not God whatever it is that has held you as I pass by the Spirit, the power of God comes on you. Some of you will be receiving impartation. It's not everybody that is going to just be free from whatever it is. Father, in the name of Jesus, honor your word right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, be free.
I may not be able to move, but please lift your hands. All of you, at the count of three, overflow three, let me hear you shout the name Jesus. The moment you shout that name, I'm seeing like, I'm seeing like fire coming out of people. This is something living people. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. From the front to the be free now in the name of Jesus. I release your destiny now. I release your destiny now. Madam, look at me. I set her free now. Release her destiny right now. That woman you are holding. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I declare to you. I, I release speed inside. I want to pray that prayer now. I don't know what has slowed you down. Overflow three. From the front to the back. May the grace for speed come on you now. May the grace for speed come on you now. Please, whether you are an usher or not, whether you are an usher or not, help anybody under the anointing close to you. In the name of Jesus, I don't know what has held your destiny bound, but in the name of Jesus, one more time, I want you to shout the name Jesus at the count of three. One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. You came for a miracle service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look at me. Overflow 3, look at me. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a family. I will soon walk out, but I just want you to know you are part of and that it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside. The Lord is showing me a family here. There is a plague of sickness. Everybody from father to the last child. There is nobody who is fine. Right now as I'm speaking, the power of God is coming upon that family right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Overflow 3. I'm seeing the number 21. This is the healing anointing coming on 21 people. Right now in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. This is not a healing miracle. This is the anointing to heal. Right now from the front to the back. Upon gentlemen and upon ladies, receive that grace. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Please everyone, overflow. One, two, three, main auditorium. Please open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit. And declare that everything the Lord is doing must find expression in your life. Lift your voice and pray.
Please lift your voice and pray. Please lift your voice and pray. 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 Voice and pray. God is changing something in someone's body. A blood disease. Just right where I'm standing. A blood disease is living right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, let me tell you, when, when we do these things, we are not wasting time at all. You need to see what the Lord um, did in some of those overflows. There are people who have real issues and sometimes, Madam, please lift your hands. I'd like you to shout Jesus as loud as you can. Let the name of the Lord be praised. The spirit of prayer. When I was in overflow three, I saw that grace. Would do an impartation, but it's in this season. There is a spirit of prayer and supplication that is coming upon the body of Christ, especially in Zaria. There is a spirit and there is a grace for prayer. In the name of Jesus. Take that grace now. There is a grace and there is a spirit of prayer that is coming upon the body of Christ. You don't pray just by self-will. There is an agency. I declare now in this main auditorium, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, I stand by the spirit and I declare receive a baptism of this spirit. Flames upon your prayer life. Flames upon your prayer life. Flames upon your prayer life. I declare capacity in your spirit man. Capacity. I swing open the door for utterance in prayer. Grace to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone in the media stand is receiving a baptism of the spirit of prayer a fresh grace a baptism of prayer hallelujah you see let me tell you this please listen one of the systems for enforcing dominion on earth is the ability to legislate in the place of prayer and when the saints cannot pray and pray with understanding then nothing will change within their territory an attack on your prayer life is a real attack on your spiritual life nobody prays out of convenience there is a grace that must come upon a man to pray Hallelujah. If you are in ministry, I pray again for the grace for prayer. Let me tell you, if you are a man of God and you are not a man of prayer, you are not in ministry. Believe me, you are not in ministry. It's only a matter of time you will know you are not in ministry. I decree and declare a supply of the Spirit, an ability from heaven upon men and women of God that anyone who has the call of God upon his life whether you know it or not, the grace to pray, take it now. 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 The grace to travail. Not give me tea and bread. Not give me tea and bread. To pray destiny altering prayers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We'll quickly minister to the sick now. Um, please listen. For those of you who are coming for the first time, we usually 
take prayer requests that I pray for now. And if you have not written your prayer request, please do so. You can get a notebook or just beckon on someone by your left and right to just give you an opportunity to write. While we are doing that, please, um, I will minister to those overflow one. Okay, the main auditorium and overflow two. Please listen. Main auditorium and overflow two. Um, when I ask you to come, you will come and stand in front here. You will be ministered to right here. Overflow one, you will stand in front of your projector stand. That away from the canopy to allow for space. Now, um, will I call it overflow 2B now? The overflow that extends to second equa. Someone will come there to minister. All those who are trusting God for healings, protocol ushers, please just coordinate them. You will stand in front there and then overflow 3. Um, okay, there's another overflow down towards overflow three um they will join the ones at they will join the ones at um the second equa area so let that be a single overflow too and then finally overflow three you can walk to the front of your projector stand all of you who desire to be prayed for we believe in the healing power of jesus i believe in miracles and our time is gone you'll be ministered to very fast and then we'll tidy up other things. Whilst that is going on, please, we're trying to conserve time. You see that a, a standard miracle service has to really be a vigil. If you want to do a thorough walk, you are not going to be able to do a thorough walk within two or three hours. But we're trying to just do the best we can do with the time that we have. While you are coming out, please, ushers, PR, join them or any other department um, to collect the, the prayer request. Those online... You can connect by faith if you're trusting God for healing and you can submit your prayer request and then it will be prayed for here. Praise the Lord. I believe in miracles. If you have written your prayer request, um, the ushers or you'll find a few people who will lift up their hands or lift up baskets and you'll be allowed to put it there. Now, very quickly, those trusting God to be ministered to... Um, for any kind of healing make your way out quickly just like i've designated please quickly you come stand here by faith overflow one in front of your projector stand overflow three in front of your projector stand overflow two you can join um, those in the main auditorium here i hope i'm doing the right thing and then overflow two b and two c let me call it now 2B extending to second equa and 2C extending to the gate of the third overflow. All of you together will form one overflow and then we'll minister very, very fast. Very, very fast so that we can finish. While you are doing that, please, please let me advise, especially for those outside, as you are walking out, make sure your phones, your bags and any of your belongings is safe. And then help those under the anointing. God is delivering people, setting people free. And let's just let him be God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Accept the people ministering to you, ask you questions. Don't worry. Just a touch and then you'll be back to your seat and check yourself. Whether you're on a wheelchair or on a crutch or sitting, whatever the situation is, whilst they touch and they minister, just expect a miracle. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Within the time we have, we pray that your healing power will flow. Let the sick be healed. Transform our lives. Visit us in a new way. Glorify Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let incurable situations live. And I pray, God, that you give your people testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. In a Jiraka, Sir King Kana, Bazan De Napa, Say
And you make me just like you, my beautifier. My beautifier. Hey. You're taking away the shame. Taking away the pain. Taking away the pain. Make my life so beautiful. Make my life so beautiful. My These are the guys that came from um, where? You came from Thailand. This gentleman is a professional footballer. Where's your colleague? Where are you? Come. We salute your coming. Both of them are professional footballers. What happened to your legs? Our last league match last year, so I got a fracture from it. And from there, it's affected your career. You're a footballer too. You came all the way from Thailand. You believe Jesus will heal you? These are your, you see, you cannot, I don't even know what this, this does. I asked to stop because they are, we're having some interesting cases today. Please shift. God is doing a serious miracle for this lady. Said she had, is it ovarian cancer? Ovarian what? Something like that. Mama? Oh dear. Look what God is doing. She will be healed, eh? Amen. Mm. Because when I looked at her, I did not see a pregnancy. I saw something that looked like a mass of something. This is demonic. Huh? Where are you from, madam? Where did you come from? From Venice, I'm from Kano. From Kano? Yes. Jesus, look what is happening. Let her be healed now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, don't cry. Cancer, I speak to you. You have a name, you have a voice. Release this lady now. In the name of Jesus. My friend, look at me. You came all the way from Thailand. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the living God. This fractured leg, I fix it back now. You see what is happening to you? What do you feel happening to you? Huh? Look at me. Go, run. Don't mind them just focus on me if you're having pain we're not acting here huh? so if you're having any a miracle has happened to you when i held your leg i felt the power of god moving through you you see this thing you see is a very demonic thing it's not about fracture do you understand number one come my friend you're together too i want to pray for you you see god is looking for people to represent him in every sphere huh? just because you are footballers doesn't mean that you ignore God. Many footballers don't love Jesus. They love football and they love the money that comes with it. But we are not only here. God has perfected this. Let me pray on the x-ray, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this miracle remain forever. Amen. I want to pray for both of you. I'll, I'll see you after the service and just say hi since you came just to honor you. But listen to me. I'm sure I don't know you. I've never seen you. Can I prophesy on your career? In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, from today, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You are a footballer, but you play by the anointing, my friend. It takes more than just kicking a ball. I release the grace to excel. And for you, I release the grace to excel. 
right now two of you will return back to thailand and the lord will honor you in jesus name god bless you thank you so much for your patience we're about to pray on the requests i believe in the power of the holy spirit and i truly believe that as we pray on these requests that every situation that has defied god it must answer to the name of the lord let her go now i curse you by the god of heaven out now who else praise the lord please let's rise thank you for your patience it's a miracle service if you are yet to submit your request please go ahead please go ahead hallelujah we have gotten all kinds of humbling testimonies from this revelation this is this is a revelation that God gave as a communication of his love and the depth of his desire to see people touched not everybody can be prophesied to not everybody may be personally ministered to but this is a representation of your pain is a representation of your expectation and please i want you to believe release your faith you may not have come out requiring healing and with all the ministrations you may not have been directly ministered to i want you to believe because this is representing you before god i want you to stretch your hands here and pray passionately pray passionately You're not done. that lord this that i'm bringing before you this will be the last I truly believe make sure we collect for those outside if you are still being ministered to no problem you can just focus while you are receiving hallelujah praise the Lord praise the Lord I'm seeing fire burn on this thing I wanted to go down on my knees but I just saw fire burning and the Lord said I should declare and speak over it I'll declare and speak over it um, there is one gentleman and one lady one gentleman one lady the power of God is coming on two of them the moment that happens then I have the release to speak on this these are signs and wonders my precious people sometimes God does these things and we have no idea why he does them a gentleman and a lady this is the sign that God gave me. Now I'm ready to pray. In the name of Jesus, believe with me. I stand upon this request now and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, every request laid before God here, I decree and declare it lives your life forever. Please believe. Please believe. We are believers in the mighty name of jesus christ Amen. hear me the bible says these egyptians you see today he said you will see them no more forever therefore i declare that everything that defied the name of the lord represented here i declare it is buried now and forever every impossible situation written here situations that men do not have the ability to produce or provide I call on the God of heaven the creator of the ends of the earth in the name of Jesus let there be supernatural miracles supernatural miracles let there be supernatural miracles that time we had not started this a woman who had been barren for eight years 
wrote a request then we had not started this i'm not sure i, I think koinonia just started and when it was brought to me one of our precious ladies she used to be in the media and i held and i just heard that it was done in the spirit and i said that was it and the woman had three plates one two three now that's not the miracle the miracle is that none of the child had any kind of issue whatsoever three of them are alive today i have seen them they are strong they are fine the bible says that everybody who ministers should minister according to the measure of grace when you attempt something higher than your level of anointing except god instructs you it is pride we understand our spiritual jurisdictions there are things that you have there are things you may not have now in experience I want to pray for you there is most of the requests here it is favor that will produce it listen listen many requests that we are writing whether it's a whole notebook you could as well get a clean sheet of paper and just write one word favor and that would be it it would still be worth it they are just different versions of expressing your need for favor i want to pray that grace there is a real grace for favor in the name of jesus christ favor listen favor is not having money favor is access to the hearts of men it's more than money you can have money and not be favored the proof of favor is not just money the proof of favor is the loyalty of men in the name that is above all names i decree and declare let the grace for favor rest upon you now let it bring about the accomplishment of this request in the mighty name of jesus There are requests written here. It is mercy that will answer it. The Bible says, even the lawful captive shall be delivered. I declare mercy upon this request. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I stand representing the desires, the pain of your people. You have done it again and again, and we will never take you for granted lord let it please you that everyone who has submitted a request may they have the opportunity to stand upon this altar to testify in the name of jesus christ the spirit that brought the need for these requests i banish them from your life in the name of jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ may it please the Lord that testimonies will come out of this now please lift your hands we're closing let me speak over your life it is always my honor to do this because I have seen the creative power of the Word of God I've seen its ability to turn to change to transform lives there was a very humbling testimony something a gentleman this is something that happened like last week I thought he would come and share maybe he would come down to Zaria and testify himself that's why I didn't say it he walks in somewhere like a factory or something and he's given the key to the warehouse now i don't know what kind of carelessness happened whether his friends or whatever this gentleman just misplaced the key and these are very serious security keys it's not like something you just carry a stone and hit and buy another one and it became a serious issue for him and they threatened to call the police they threatened to do a lot of things and i was about to sleep when i got his text he had been calling and i said please send the text and he sent it and i looked at it 
and he said i'm about to lose my job my wife my children this and that and suddenly the anointing of the spirit came upon me on my bed i laid hands and i sent him a text i said find that key that's all i wrote god is my witness i will not stand here at this level and corner stories this gentleman said he just was listening to a koinonia message and he slept i'm telling you the truth under god and he saw me in a dream this is what he said i was not there he saw me giving him the key in a dream he woke up in the morning listen listen that's not a miracle he woke up in the morning opened his drawer and the key was there <laughs> truly speaking you see let me tell you this if you are struggling to believe this you are not a christian because the very foundation of christianity was a strange miracle that a spirit leaves his body and returns back at will please let's not limit god i say these things to challenge us these versions of unbelief we continue to endorse is not going to make our lives fruitful you have nothing to lose to stretch your faith all the way don't they limited god in the wilderness by saying can god make a way hallelujah what is strange about an angel of the lord coming to drop a key somewhere didn't you hear the testimony of the gentleman who a stranger called him and gave him a number he shared here you remember gave him a number he calls a general in the army and they say who gave you my number and he doesn't know who gave him his number bottom line he gets a job as a result look let me tell you there is nothing god cannot do i'm praying for you the dimension of testimonies that will it will shock you the testifier first receive it now receive that strange order of testimonies In the name of Jesus Christ. A gentleman here, one of the years, checked his name on admission list and clearly saw that he didn't get anything. He frowned his way to his father who said, you are a foolish son, I'm not surprised. And he came, I don't know if it was miracle service or one of the prayers, returns back to the board and checks and there is his name admission list see let me tell you this let me tell you this you you are liberty to not believe but don't say it's a lie just say i don't believe based on my work with god and based on what i have not seen but don't say it's a lie he told nathaniel you will see greater things than this jesus said it are we together strangers that must arise and step in over your issue in the name of Jesus I connect you to them I connect you to them I connect you to them by the power of the Holy Spirit there are times you have the gift but you do not have access to the ears of the kings you will need those who are already in the palace otherwise Joseph you will remain in the prison I pray for you whoever has access to the ears of your helper may God compel them to speak about you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for everyone trusting God for a job in the name that is above all names please believe and by the power that is in the name of Jesus I declare that between now and August by the grace and the name of the Lord return with a miracle job <laughs> hallelujah I pray for those in ministry the fire that must come on a man John Wesley says set yourself on fire and the world will come to watch you born i decree and declare may that fire come upon your life every
every dying business in this place hear the word of the Lord I speak to you come back to life now and to live to deliver those appointed to death there are people appointed to death I heard a man of God give a story of a gentleman who missed a flight he missed a flight and the plane crashed and everybody was happy he missed the flight they didn't know he followed a train that crashed are we together you miss a flight and you are saying Lord I give you praise you enter a train and you die these are people appointed to death in the name of Jesus death is a spirit it has a voice it can hear I forbid the earth from receiving your body in the mighty name of Jesus Christ every family under financial captivity every family here and every individual sincerely trusting God to come through for you financially I pray for you may the month of June be your month please believe me may the month of June be your month let the hand of God let the grace of God rest upon you God causing all grace to abound towards you may you have sufficiency in the name of Jesus Christ every project you have in front of you whether it is a building project whether it's a spiritual growth project whether it's a ministry expansion project whether it's a business project it says the hand of Zerubbabel that began this work that same hand will complete it I pray in the name of Jesus whatever project you have the grace to execute it let it be given to you now I don't know what has destroyed your appetite for the Word of God you will open your Bible and look at it like this like a storybook you can read a book of 600 pages in one week but you can hardly finish one page of the Bible it's an attack I decree and declare let the spirit of revelation and a passion for the Word of God may it rest upon you may it rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ two more prayer points and we're done herein is our father glorified that ye bear much fruit the grace for results is called the power of performance receive that grace now I speak to you produce results produce results repeated results predictable results in every area of your life be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ finally let me pray for you everything that is alive grows when you give birth to a child and he cannot walk after three years no teeth he can't talk you know that something is wrong with that child are we true your destiny is like a child if it is alive then it should grow when a tree grows and begins to mature it begins to branch are we together now and then it starts to invite the birds it also invites men to come and partake of the fruit I don't know what has taunted your growth in life and in destiny but as we cap up this month's miracle service especially your spiritual life some of you you've not backslidden but sincerely you've been at the same level it's not like you've gone down as it were but you've just rotated around the same experience I declare rise to a new level rise to a new level rise to a new level thank you Jesus thank you Jesus let me encourage you listen make sure to pay attention to the testimonies that God gives you and be sure to make it a duty 
to testify let it not be a burden to you are not testimonies don't just endorse that a man of god is anointed testimonies are proof to men to creation to all and sundry that god is love and that he is still mighty testimonies are a tool that consolidates the convictions of men and creates the same in others it's important to not withhold testimony someone's faith is depending on the miracle that comes from releasing your faith so be sure that as god touches you you may not have the luxury of coming down to zaria for those of you who are far but we're on various social media platforms you can always make your testimonies known and then you can contact our helplines and then someone will be there to document your testimony and it will edify the people of god praise the lord still standing everyone our time is gone i want to make an altar call i believe in salvation listen it matters that in a crowd of people like this and many more connected around the world it matters that we give people an opportunity to encounter jesus let's settle down please let me have your attention lend me your attention for a minute or two you are here in the main auditorium overflow one overflow two and all the auxiliary overflows overflow three and online and you know that you are yet to truly surrender your all to jesus and receive of his life or there are others who are saying apostle i have given my life to jesus but i need to rededicate my life to start a work with him that is truthful and serious wherever you are and whatever category you belong to our time is gone just one minute for this aside from overflow three because of time i will request overflow one overflow two wherever you are making this altar call and those in quickly leave your seat very boldly and i like for you to come and stand right here let it be my honor and my joy to lead you to jesus i don't expect you to still be thinking about it the holy spirit should already be convicting you do not wait for anyone to come be the first let me for time's sake count one to five one quickly please if you're coming hurry up win that war do not say we came in group and i do not want anybody to know that i'm handing over my life to jesus receiving the life of god is not a funeral service is something that is worth celebrating koinonia are you appreciating them keep coming come to jesus young and old come to him the bible says all who will come to him he will in no wise cast away i don't believe this is all overflow one overflow two join them very quickly and the lord added daily to the church as many as should be saved hallelujah praise the lord make sure that overflow three has uh, the people out god bless you i salute your courage please lift your right hand as i lead you to make this prayer you are not just reciting a poem this is a real um conversation between you and the lord you are receiving his life and you are handing over yours say after me lord jesus say it from the depth of your heart lord jesus some of you come for altar call when we are saying in jesus name you are not born again you should come the the, the prayer you don't stroll around and then round up you don't round up the prayer of salvation you participate with your heart man believes are we together okay lord jesus i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you resurrected for me tonight I receive your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life I have the life of God and I declare that from tonight I am a child of God I move forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these ones precious as they are 
we receive them into the fold the family of faith and I declare their sins forgiven and I declare by the authority of scripture that beginning from today the grace to walk victoriously is released upon them Holy Spirit I commend them to you that you continue your ministry in their lives make mighty men and women out of them I bless you with the grace that grants you capacity to stay consistent may the Lord bless you in Jesus name I pray amen and amen I salute all of you for making this decision and then for those who also made online thank you for making this decision very quickly I like you to follow the someone waving her hands a lady and all of you in concerts please follow her and um, there'll be a group of people to receive you very briefly and you'll be back let's honor them